John Marshall, MD, is director of the Roosh Center for the Cure of Gastrointestinal Cancers in Washington, D.C. He and other oncologists have begun to notice an alarming trend among their colorectal cancer patients. The rule of thumb is that colon cancer is an old person's disease. And frankly, for most of my career, that's what it was. These were people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, it's probably been 10 years ago, maybe a little longer, these kids started to trickle into my clinic. Now today, I can go to clinic uh, just yesterday, 30 patients, probably half of them now under the age of 50. Someone ran some numbers and clearly showed that while we are doing better overall, what came out of that analysis was this rising tide of young people, the under age 50, you know, 20s, 30s, um, with colon cancer. One such patient, Amanda Fiegel, lives near Washington, D.C. with her husband and three-year-old daughter. I'll see you after school, okay? okay? All right, love you. Young mom, lovely couple, classic Washington couple, busy doing what they're supposed to be doing. A mother bird sat on her egg. And then, kind of out of the blue as these things happen, she was discovered to have colon cancer. I was sitting at work one day and just at my desk, I had a fork full of salad to my mouth and all of a sudden I just had this excruciating abdominal pain. I thought at first I must have some sort of food poisoning or something. Within the next two days it just got worse and worse so I ended up going to my doctor who recommended a CAT scan after running other various tests. She thought it must be an ovarian cyst or, or something related to that because a young woman in her mid-30s experienced an abdominal pain. What else would it be? Wyatt Smith, another of Dr. Marshall's patients, was diagnosed with colorectal cancer at age 29. I'd probably had symptoms for, let's say, two or three years. The common symptoms with colorectal cancer are irregularities in the bowels or blood in your stool. I'd shown some of those signs. The doctors had not taken me seriously. Some had just assumed it was because I was drinking too much. Others just figured it would work its way out. It'd be fine. Finally, Ellie kind of put her foot down and said, this has gotten a little ridiculous. You really need to stress this to your doctor finally did. He took me seriously and recommended that I get a colonoscopy. I went to the ER as it got worse and I told them I've had a CAT scan. They've told me it was my ovaries. A gynecological surgeon went in and did exploratory surgery laparoscopically to see the cyst and it wasn't there. So uh, I woke up and they said, that's really strange. We're not sure what's wrong with you. Maybe get a colonoscopy as soon as you can, because that's all we can think of. I got the colonoscopy in February, and a week later, he told me he had found a mass in my rectum. And a week later, came back with the biopsy results, and it was cancerous. April 6th, I had the colonoscopy, and even as I was um, kind of going under the anesthesia, I remember the anesthesiologist was kind of joking with me. Isn't this kind of silly? We're doing this at your age and you're so healthy. Are you just doing this for fun? I said, yeah. Then I'll see you when I wake up. But when I woke up, uh, no one would really make eye contact with me. I could tell something was wrong. You have to remember that the screening test intervals, you know, the every five to 10 year interval for colonoscopy is sort of a make-believe number because it was built around a biology of polyps. Polyps take a long time to form, a long time to transform into cancer, and so you have this lag time. But it turns out that polyps, that traditional polyp mechanism, is only responsible for a portion of all of colon cancer. And so a lot of our young people with colon cancer don't have the polyp kind. 
they have the kind that can come on all of a sudden. And so even if we did screening earlier and say dropped it to 40, for example, it might pick up more colon cancers, but not the kind that we're really looking for. So there's no question we need to be thinking about this. It wasn't on anyone's radar, so if it had been, I don't know that it would have been a dramatically different outcome in my case, but I think I could have um, at least avoided one surgery. <laughs> Being a practicing physician in the world today is tricky. God bless the primary care doctor, God bless the emergency room doctor who has to juggle this. Most of the time, bleeding in a patient is not colon cancer. So you have to take a good history. You gotta figure out who needs it, who doesn't. Make a good guess. You gotta have a compliant patient on the other end, too. So as a result, very often, patients' cancers will be higher stage. They'll have been sat on longer, which of course makes for a worse prognosis, a, a more difficult disease to deal with. Wyatt Smith and his doctors dismissed his bowel symptoms for two years before having them evaluated. The delay proved a fateful one for Wyatt. The next step was to get a CT scan done. Before I even knew the results of that, I was in with a surgeon, gave him the disc, he went down to radiology, they looked at it, and it was uh, a little late in the game. I was already stage four with uh, metastatic to my liver at that point. He's undergoing treatment for metastatic colon cancer. He's doing okay, he's doing okay. We've always been able to pull a rabbit out of a hat for him. And I know how many rabbits there are. So as a couple, they've been incredibly powerful contributors to advocacy around young folks with colon cancer and really have become a role model of how to balance the sort of terror of the disease with making sure you get your bucket list done, with going to work every day because you got to pay the bills and pay the insurance, and having an occasional bourbon, I happen to know. So uh, that seems to me a, a good rounded life. It's important to me to share my story because it's not a common story. But unfortunately, it seems to be becoming more common and that the incident rates in patients under 50 with colorectal cancer are going up. Even though I have a very unfortunate diagnosis, I'm not letting it run my life. I'm not sitting crying every day thinking about, oh, I'm gonna die from this disease. Instead, I'm trying to take advantage of every day that I have and do all the things that I want to do, just maybe on a little bit more of a compressed timeline. Most of my young patients with colon cancer never did anything wrong. This is not the Big Mac eating set, right? This is the cardboard eating, marathon running group of people that are getting these cancers. So, you know, what did they do wrong? Nothing. We need to get to the bottom of that and figure out if there are true environmental things that we can avoid or alter in our world to try and change this pattern. Hi, my name is Kelvin and I work on the team that creates the content that you've just seen, Medscape TV. If you like the content and want to see more, click on the button to the right and it'll take you to the full series.